Alrighty guys, anyone who's building a custom car uh, probably has to deal with AN lines, Army Navy lines. Uh, so today I figured I would share with you guys a couple tips and tricks on how to make AN lines. So the line I'm making is a Dash 8, it's going to have 290s and it's essentially going to just go to the back of uh, the fuel rails here. Alright, so the great thing about AN lines is obviously they can be used in a variety of applications. Uh, the majority of lines on this car, or almost all of them, are AN lines. And uh, we'll be doing the same thing on the Turbo Camaro over here. Uh, they're good in high temperature situations, and honestly one of the best things about them uh, is just that the variety of different fittings and adapters you can get, um, and some of the things you can achieve with them is just fantastic. Plus they look awesome. Uh, I think a lot of people know how to build lines, but I just wanted to share with you guys a few of the different tricks that I've picked up along the way and things that I think might be important to you for making your own lines. Okay, so first step is cutting the lines. I probably don't have to tell you that you have to have the line secure when you cut it, um, but one of the critical things, because there's stainless steel braid in here, is that if you wrap tape around the line when you cut it, it will help try to keep everything together. So the traditional way that I did this for years is with one of these. So here's what it looks like. So that's a zip cut. You can see it worked pretty well. Um, we lost a little bit of the fibery stuff off of it. We can snip that off with a side cutter. Let me just pull this off for a second, we'll have a look. And here's what it looks like. So you can see that end is very, very smooth. If, if the end doesn't look like that after you cut it, you're not ready to make the line. Um, so traditionally the angle grinder method like I just used works very well, but I will show you something that works much, much, much better. And that will be a set of these. I just got these for like 50 bucks. I've made probably 200 AN lines over the years, so I don't know why I didn't buy these sooner, but let me show you how these work. So that's those. You can see again, you know, a little bit of a fray off the end. We'll cut that off, but all in all, pretty, pretty nice. So that is a lot quicker and easier and it doesn't stink than using an angle grinder. Obviously I did that with, you know, just throwing this together, but you clean that up, that end is going to work absolutely perfect. Um, so yeah, those hose cutting shears, that's a way nicer option than the angle grinder. All right. Hose is cut, ready to go. We go on to installing the nut on the end of the hose. So we'll get all the braided stuff in there. Now one thing, I'll kind of push this on and then I'll show you what I'd like to do here. Uh, I don't use fancy AN wrenches because I'm not rich. I just use a regular crescent wrench. Once you're trying to get this nut on, you need to push on the hose and actually rotate the nut counterclockwise. This isn't as apparent on a fitting like this, but if you have like a name brand Russell fitting, it will be extremely apparent. All right, one thing that's really important, try to, aha, there you go. You can see the tip of the hose there is bottomed out at the bottom of the threads. That is absolutely critical. All right, next most important thing, with the hose bottomed out, we're gonna take a piece of tape, go that way, and we wrap it around this edge. So what happens on these hoses, especially the bigger diameter, is that as you try to put the fitting in the top, it will pull the nut up. And it can sometimes pull the nut up like a quarter inch or something. And if that happens, your hose is at risk of blowing out. So it is totally critical that the nut does not move on the hose. All right, next step, you lubricate the fitting. You want the tip of the fitting and the threads. And I put a decent amount of Vaseline on here because what happens is this, this uh, thread is trying to thread itself into the actual hose itself. And that will also try to make the fitting push itself off. All right, so we have our fitting, we have our hose. I 
you see it's tapered at the end there. You push the taper in until the threads touch, like so. And then you start to thread this guy in. Now you should be able to get a decent amount of the fitting into the nut by hand. I can always tell there's something wrong immediately. If this fitting, if you try to thread it in and immediately it's very difficult to spin, you have an issue and you gotta take it apart. So you can see there, I've actually got a fair amount of this in. Next up, I take tape. <laughs> I mean, actually, I'm telling you I do this. I don't ever do this, but I know that I'll enrage the internet if I don't, because I just use regular crescent wrenches on these fittings. And the most beautiful thing is I don't even use the fancy vice jaws. I just strong arm it together. So then we start to tighten this and I'll show you something at the end. All right, one other important thing. I'll take my tape off here because I'm done. But these fittings, believe it or not, at least from what I read in a, um, it's actually like an army specification I found on the internet years ago, makes total sense. Um, this fitting is not supposed to tighten all the way down to the nut. It's supposed to be a very small gap. So what have I left here? I've got some feelers. This is like, I don't know, 20 thou. See the feeler gauge fits in between those two. Now, traditionally I've always just bottomed them out until I read that spec and it makes a very good point. So this, these are, uh, these are aluminum, right? They're not very strong. So if you bottom these two out and you try to tighten it, you can actually start to crack this nut and then when you feed it a whole bunch of pressure, it can break on you. So I always like just leaving a bit of a gap in there, you know, 20, 30 thou or something like that. And then you know that the fitting isn't over tightened and it's gonna work perfectly. All right, and we can see my tape job there. It worked pretty good. So that's why I've never brought the proper wrenches. I probably should have them because I make these all the time. Um, but yeah, taping the fitting works pretty good if you have good crescent wrenches. All right, now one more beautiful little fact or trick with AN fittings. These are GIC caps and plugs and they cost about a dollar each versus five or six dollars for an AN cap or plug. Now these are not interchangeable with AN hoses. But what I use these for, because they thread in perfectly and they have the same taper, the difference is they actually have a slightly different thread. So this won't properly hold pressure on an AN hose. Say you take off your tranny cooler lines or you know an oil drain line and you just wanna temporarily cap it or plug it with the car turned off obviously so it's not spilling oil on your floor. These are what I use. And I'll show you. That guy out of there. thread in, they work perfect, and they're half the price. Again, you cannot run these under pressure, um, but for temporary things, like uh, if you're plugging a hose, plugging or capping a hose so it doesn't leak with the car turned off, no pressure in the line, these are the absolute best thing to use. I've got like 100 of these around. Every AN hose I take off, put one of these guys in it, never leaks on the ground. Alrighty, there we have it. So that is our finished line. Uh, you can see this thing came together pretty nice. One thing you will definitely want to do before you put a line on is just blow it out with some compressed air. Um, but as always, guys, thanks for watching the channel. I hope you learned something today. Uh, and uh, as always, let me know if you have any questions or comments down below uh, in the comment section. And uh, good luck with making these lines. They're very versatile. They're very good. And I hope it works out well for you. I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching guys and we will see you on the next one.